Next Wave TV's coverage of Cinegear Expo 2011 is made possible by JAG 35 Affordable Solutions for Filmmakers CPM Film Tools Your lightweight solution for caging the beast Lightcraft Workshop The perfect tools to create the perfect image Tony here from Next Wave DV and I'm here with Shane Pearlbutt ASC. Uh, Shane, uh, you've been using Canon HDSLRs for quite a while, kind of pushing the limits of them beyond what most people could have ever anticipated what they've been used for. And now you kind of want to share this with the rest of the world, uh, what you've customized and how they've become a, basically a cinematic machine. Yes, this is our coming out party at, uh, at Hurlbut Visuals DSLR Cinema Rentals. Uh, we're here to kind of uh, create, innovate, and educate. And uh, we've put these packages together, and we've been doing this for about 31 months that I've been shooting with this camera. Uh, and we've had our rental division open for about a year, but it was really based on just uh, supplying cinematographers that enjoyed the DSLR or assistants that were asked to use it at another company, and they came to us because they knew we had the most uh, kick-ass rigs and uh, that we had turned it into a system. Because that's what the, the biggest thing is the filmmaker, is it has to be a system to be efficient. And that's what our, uh, you know, our rental division is about. The cameras can form and mold and melt and, and they can be as small as you want or as big as you want. And that's really the power of the platform. Now, who do you see these best working for? What kind of production companies, filmmakers, and so on? Uh, there's nothing you can't do with a DSLR. Uh, I mean, I've shot a, a film for Warner Brothers on this format. Uh, you know, it's uh, I shot 100 commercials, 25 short films, some music videos with it. There's nothing this thing can't do. Uh, you know, I, I always say, you know, the sky is not is no longer the limit it's the stratosphere with this thing and it's kind of re kind of it, it just like fired up my passion again as a cinematographer because with this tool you need to be a cinematographer it's 8-bit color you have to get it close what you see is what you get and uh, lighting is very very uh, a powerful tool with this thing it can't be just a raw file and then you go back in the post process and manipulate it you don't have that option. And besides the obviously lower cost of the camera itself, what other ways can companies find cost-saving alternatives by using HDSLRs? Well, basically the cost savings is what we would say is 40%. Okay, so if you were going to shoot on film or the Alexa or the RED, you can save 40% with going with DSLRs. You're going to save on lighting, you're going to save on uh, grip, electric, camera, uh, food, water, power, everything shrinks because now a camera package that used to fit into a 10-ton truck is now fitting into a one-ton truck. The, on the Navy SEAL movie, I fit a 15-camera package with two film camera packages in a one-ton truck with craft service and the sound guy and a 3,000-watt generator. So it's, it's really, imagine, you know, now it's like there's not is all the gack that goes along with with making a movie it's it's shrinking that footprint it's making it more intimate and i think more exciting as a filmmaker okay. now on a separate note um, canon obviously just worked together with technicolor to release the new cinestyle preset and uh, i'm assuming you've had a chance to work with it what are your opinions on how that has uh, changed potentially uh, the way that dslrs have been used up till now well, the Cine style in Technicolor is, again, legitimizing this uh, workflow. Uh, they have been getting a lot of people uh, in that have been shooting with this format and not having the best of luck in the post process. So they really wanted to grab it by the balls, let's say, and say, okay, this is the benchmark this is how you should roll out. This is gonna give you the most latitude in the, uh, in the color correction process. And I like it. Uh, I find that you know, it's a little difficult to expose with, so you have to do a whole new etiquette. So you, if, you feel your, if you feel like your movie is going to have a cross-process look, or a bleach bypass look, or a 
you know, Rec 709 look, then you need to put that into your picture style and you need to expose your image with that picture style. Then before you record, you need to slam it into cine style and record on that flat medium because you cannot expose cine style. It's so flat that you're constantly going to be trying to, uh, you'll end up underexposing it a lot. And that's what I've seen just a lot of the tests. Uh, people are underexposing it because they're trying to get contrast in the image and it's making it incredibly noisy. So my etiquette is start on neutral, expose to neutral, slam it over to cine style to record. Good. And now there's obviously a lot of other companies, they've been seeing the D popularity of DSLRs, large sensors, and uh, Sony, Panasonic, they've been releasing their own versions of large sensor video cameras. Have you had a chance to work with any of these and what are your opinions on them? Yes, I've looked at the AF100, I've had the F3 in my hand, I've shot some of that stuff. I mean, it all comes down to color space and, and the sensor. And for me, the Canon has the best color space, the best skin tones, the best contrast range, and it actually looks cinematic. All those other cameras look like a video camera with a large sensor. And now for working with the Canons, obviously there are certain workarounds that you have to deal with um, because of the issues with aliasing and, and uh, the, the low color spacing. Um, what kind of post-production solutions have you guys been able to work out? Um, and has there been cost savings in there or have you ha had to kind of make that up um, in the back end? No, there's always cost savings uh, in, even in the, po the post workflow. We found that Adobe CS5 is the best way to uh, to actually read the H.264 codec. They worked with Canon specifically to design uh, and to uh, to be able to open up, unlock that color space. Uh, the the other thing that I found is everyone talks about, well, what about this compression? What about all this aliasing? Well, you got to understand the compression is what makes this thing look so good. Uh, and so what I've done is working with a company out of Albuquerque, Albuquerque called Cinefilm, they have this dark energy tower. And it literally goes in and it will strip all the compression. It uses a logarithm that strips all the compression off of the uh, image and then uses the same logarithm to put any type of grain level that you want over that image. And it's pretty incredible. I mean, it makes it absolutely seamless cutting from 35 millimeter to 5D. And that's what I've been doing in all my movies. I'm shooting either film or 5D. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for your time, Shane. Yeah, Good luck absolutely. on the, Thank on the you future. Thank you very much. Thanks. Nice meeting you. Subscribe to us on YouTube and visit nextwavedv.com for more news and training for video and filmmakers.